does Coinbase have enough of the global share of Bitcoin trading for them to be an accurate gauge uh, to prevent market manipulation? So I wanted to talk about BlackRock because uh, the Larry Fink CEO, because that's everywhere. If, if you're on Twitter, if you're on YouTube, um, he's everywhere saying that, hey, Bitcoin, crypto can revolutionize financing. It, it's, it's basically digital gold. And it seems like for the longest time, all we've heard from, from the government's types, the, the bigwig types, the, the Larry Finks of the world, that, that, you know, no, that stuff's bad. That stuff's bad. What's changed? Well, there's been a lot of time for them to educate themselves. And this information has probably percolated up from middle management to the upper echelons of companies like BlackRock, where they're realizing, okay, we misstepped. You know, first they ridicule you, you know, all these stages until they join you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they try to adopt it. So uh, Larry Fink has been criticized in the past for saying uh, negative things about Bitcoin and crypto in general, about the negative or the nefarious activities taking place on those networks. And he's come around now in a big way. And it's, it's caused uh, stirs because this BlackRock application for an ETF is, is significant. Now, recently, we saw the SEC come out and say it wasn't sufficient. So there's been some changes and an updated, uh, I think it's called a 19B4, filed with the SEC for this spot Bitcoin ETF. And it's uh, out in the public now that Coinbase is going to be uh, sort of the, the market mechanism by which um, these ETFs can prevent um, sort of the kind of front running and market manipulation, manipulation that needs to be present for an ETF. So the reason why, or one of the reasons why, the SEC has denied a spot ETF in the past is because there's too much um, liquidity on certain exchanges, right? Binance being one of them. Too much liquidity on Binance that ha the SEC has no visibility into. But Coinbase is a US publicly traded company. Uh, NASDAQ is now, uh, this, this ETF is gonna be listed on NASDAQ. So, um, or maybe that was, that was the Valkyrie ETF. Let me correct myself. Valkyrie's on NASDAQ. So I can't remember where BlackRock, but probably NASDAQ as well. But if Coinbase is going to be um, the, the liquidity pool for observing for the SEC to have observation into the market so that they can ensure that there's no, uh, you know, these exchanges um, or, or really anybody is not manipulating the market at the cost of a consumer of an unwitting, you know, person like you or me that can't compete with a uh, liquidity available on BlackRock, that is going to be uh, what's kind of in question with the SEC is, does Coinbase have enough of the global share of, of Bitcoin trading for them to be an accurate gauge uh, to prevent market manip manipulation? Is, is Coinbase attached to, to BlackRock? I thought they were Valkyrie or is it all one and the same? They're all using Coinbase. Okay. Yeah. They're all using Coinbase as this uh, commercial uh, visibility into uh, Bitcoin trading. So one thing I was just thinking about, um, and I hadn't originally thought about when I was taking notes on this, was this notion of when you find a band early and then the band or the sports team gets big and then you have all these other people that are now fans and you have the bandwagon fans, do you think there might be an element between the, the Bitcoin community and the blockchain community, seeing somebody like a Larry Fink who potentially or has had negative connotations out there and now they see the money, so now they're applauding it. Do you think it's like, like I would think you would want to applaud the conversion versus vilify the, the, the uh, um, um, hey, you're, you're a late bloomer on it. And yeah. I don't know if anybody's yeah. actually uh, vilifying at all. I just I was just thinking about it. Yeah, I think most people um, were critical, critical of, of him before. Mm -hmm. But now that he has uh, oh. come, come around to the light, you know, I think there's a uh, good deal of excitement. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I think there's it's, it's a positive. Uh, it's a positive move for the market in general. Well, another thing, speaking of the positive market, one thing that I thought was interesting is I would assume news like this would just move the market heavily. And, but yet Bitcoin is still hovering at that 30-ish. You know, it didn't really have an impact like one could assume it would. 
Yeah. Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we saw a very small bump when the, it was announced, right? It was, mm -hmm. you know, went from 29 to 30, I think it got up to 30,900. Um, and, and that's probably attributed to some of this. If an ETF gets approved, I think we will see a significant um, upward price movement and a significant demand. And then, of course, you've got the halving coming up. So you really never know as people price in the halving, when does that start to take effect? That's probably um, uh, unknowable and in unquantifiable uh, because you really, it's psychology, right? When do people start to pr price in the halving, which is nine months away? Uh, but what you can know is application for the spot ETF is approved, say three, four, five, six months from now. Uh, I think we're gonna have a significant bounce at that mm -hmm. point. And, and speaking about the ETFs, uh, I didn't know this until doing research, but I mean, why would you? But like BlackRock has a perfect record when it comes to uh, that type of uh, request or putting that out there. So with them putting, hey, a request for a Bitcoin ETF, you could either, there's two thoughts. There's, they think they're gonna get it because why would they do it if they don't think they're gonna get it because history re repeats itself. Or is there, and this is just the, the conspiracy hat, are they trying to you know, kneecap it by putting it out there to have it purposely fail. Yeah, no, I have and, not and, I, and this is not this is just a random conspiracy thought out there. Just because I was, you know, if they have a perfect record, they either think they're going to get it perfect and stay perfect, or I don't know. Yeah, no. They, well, so their record is near perfect. Ninety nine point five percent of their ETF applications. I mean, come on, yeah, you? yeah. No. They've only had a few not approved, and, right. and that's out of thousands of applications. So you're absolutely right. It's a, it's a near perfect record, and I, I think they they care about their reputation too much to 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 risk the kneecapping okay. at the expense of their reputation. So I, I think they there's they either think they're going to get it, or they think that they want to they want to be you know in this queue. So when when these uh, approvals start coming. Even if it is years from now, they're they have their application out there, ahead of the line. yeah, ahead of the line, or, or at least they're along with Fidelity and Ark Invest and mm -hmm. Valkyrie and some of these. Actually, there's way more than that, uh, right? But uh, they're they're obviously the biggest asset manager that's applied. So my my gut is they see they're reading the tea leaves and they think, okay, the SEC's overstepped a little bit with this Coinbase lo Coinbase lawsuit. There is some significant. Uh, pushback from the regulatory establishment, the political elected officials, um, general public. They are need. They're going to need to provide some sort of win for the digital asset industry, and the easiest win for them to provide is the ETF, since they've already said that Bitcoin's not a security. Hey, it's Amy. Click over here to subscribe. Click over here for more content, and we'll see you next time.